Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Blessings and greetings to you in the name of Jesus. It's good to be with you this morning for worship. We are following the order of service as you uh, find it in your, your worship bulletin. Um, this is a, a communion week, as you can tell by uh, the elements up on the altar. Uh, and so for, for communion, we're going we're gonna to continue with the practice that we started uh, a couple weeks back when, when Rod was, was uh, filling in. Uh, but let me just kind of give you a quick rundown just to remind you on how this is going to go. Um, so we're going to do a continuous kind of flow for communion. Uh, for the time being, no, no rail. Uh, we'll start out with, with the, the lectern side. So Honakis, you guys will get it started. You'll come up. I'll have the host. The assistant will have the wine. Um, I'll hand you the host. So please just make sure that you put your hand out. Uh, we won't be distributing communion direct to the mouth. All right, so please just make sure that you have your hand out. Once you receive the host from me, then you'll, you'll step, uh, step up and, and receive the wine. You can discard the, the wine glass and the, the container there and then make your way to the, the pew. All right, so once we, we get done with this side of the church, the, the lectern side, then we'll move over to the pulpit side, but we start from the back. So Rick, you'll get it started from the back, and then we just make our way up to the front. If you can't make it up, for communion, I can still bring it down to you. Uh, so if, if someone is in need of communion, you know, right at the pew, uh, I'll make sure that that's brought down to you as well, okay? So that's kind of how communion is going to work this morning, all right? And then at the end, there'll be a, just a general dismissal, all right? We'll continue now with the opening verses. We come to Christ this day full of questions and concerns. We come to you in faith, O Christ, knowing that you know what is best for us. We come to Christ this day, worried about the welfare of family and friends. We come to you in faith, O Christ, prepared for whatever your response might be. We come to Christ this day, sure of his ability to help us. We come to you in faith, O Christ, trusting that there is nothing you can't do. We come to Christ this day, aware that we are not worthy to even approach him. We come to you in faith, O Christ, realizing that only you can make us worthy. We come to Christ this day, eager to receive his healing. We come to you in faith, O Christ, to be touched by your grace. We come to Christ for crumbs of his favor, but you provide a banquet of blessing, O Christ. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to please stand for the confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us of all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. Please have a seat. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 56, uh, verses 1 and then 6 through 8. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. As foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who f hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them beside those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 2 and 29 through 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what Scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel? For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Just as you, who were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is taken from St. You, the 15th chapter, verses 10 through 28. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when, you, when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by its roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, Explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person. But eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, he said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, we confess our faith now together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please have a seat. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
The text that I chose for the sermon this morning is taken from that gospel reading that I read for you just a few moments ago, but particularly the, the second part of the gospel where we heard about the, the Canaanite woman who was looking for her daughter to be made well. So all she wanted was healing for her daughter. I suppose the doctors and the experts of her day, they could do absolutely nothing for her. And so she did what had to be done. She went to Jesus. And in her mind, even, even if she just got crumbs, crumbs were something, and something was better than nothing. Now any parent would do the same. I know you would agree. But as we think about this gospel... I suppose we're not at all surprised by the actions of the mom. But what might surprise us is that initial response and the reaction of Jesus and his disciples when the mom approached. So let's just kind of quickly recap. So here we have this mom. Her daughter is not well at all. In fact, she's demon-possessed, it says. And this mom is desperately, desperately searching for healing. She just wants to see her daughter well. And so here she is, a non-Israelite, and she worked up the courage to seek out this Jesus because she believed that in Him she would find that healing. At that point in her life, I guess it was the only place she knew to turn. And in a certain way, when you think about the culture and the times, by doing this, her life was actually at risk. But she was willing to put her life at risk for the sake of her daughter. But here's where it gets kind of odd. It seems at first at least as we kind of think about it initially, it seems that Jesus and his disciples, they were ignoring her. They couldn't be bothered by this request. Listen to the words again. The mom says, my daughter is demon-possessed and she's suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. And so the disciples urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out for us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. It sounds like he wants nothing at all to do with this, right? So what's the deal? I suppose the lesson in all of this is that Jesus wants us to learn from her example. He wants for you and me to do exactly as that Canaanite woman did. To depend on Him with persistence and determination. He wants you and me, just like that Canaanite woman, to trust in Him in all of our circumstances. But the key is to do it through faith with persistence and determination. And that's what we saw in that Canaanite woman, isn't it? Persistence, determination, fueled by faith. And that's sometimes where you and I fail. In times of need, how sometimes we can either fail to turn to our Jesus with this kind of determination and persistence. Sometimes when we find ourselves in deep need, we can ask with a sort of hesitancy. Or in those times of need, maybe, just maybe we find ourselves looking to other things, turning to other means, searching for a solution someplace else. 
at the end of the day, as we think about this gospel, faith drew the Canaanite woman to Jesus. There was no other way. And even when there was apparent resistance, faith kept her there. And it was this persistence, spirit-filled persistence and faith that enabled this mom and her daughter to persevere. And the same is true for you and for me. Our Jesus wants us to depend on Him with that same persistence and determination because quite frankly, through the testing and through the discouragements that we sometimes find ourselves in life, it's faith that ultimately will carry us through. And I think that's what Jesus was demonstrating through all of this. He wants us to be a people who approach Him without ceasing. In fact, that's how Paul put it in 1 Thessalonians, right? Maybe you remember the, the passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, pray without ceasing. And why is that? Because when it comes down to it, it's our Jesus in His power and in His mercy and in His love who will always come through for us. It's this Jesus who never, ever fails us. It's His mercy that goes into action, bringing a healing to us in a way that's best for us according to His will. Now, this is hard to embrace sometimes, isn't it? It's hard to grab hold of it sometimes, especially when we feel like we're in those pits. But the Spirit is hard at work in you and me. And faith can prevail. And here's why. You see, the object of our faith is Jesus. And Jesus, well, He's the author and giver of life. And by way of His death and by way of His resurrection, there's always for you and me remarkable promises. Of course, the promise of forgiveness, but the promise of life too. New life. A new life that emerges each and every day. A new life that has the power to bring us up from the pits and fill us with hope. Even in the testing. Our Jesus is always hard at work. And when we cry out to Him with that persistence and with that faith and with trust, you can be sure that He hears us. And it's this, our Jesus, who answers us mercifully. Now sometimes our way isn't His way, right? But it takes trust. And by way of ourselves, we can't do that. But in the power of the Spirit, we too, just like that Canaanite woman, persevere. You know, every one of us can probably recall a time in our lives when our faith was tested. Like that Canaanite woman in the Gospel there have been those times where we've found ourselves in those deep, deep moments of need, crying out, maybe even finding ourselves in a state of desperation. We've all had them, and I suspect that we can count on them again. But in clinging to this certainty of our faith, with persistence and confidence, we are never, ever a people who need to despair. We don't have to be a people who are concerned with that down. Instead, with this beautiful faith that's been given to us, we know hope. 
hope in our God who loves us and who works good for us in just the right ways at just the right time. Let me close with this little quote. When the prayer made in faith is not answered and the healing for which many have sought does not come, we are not to look for someone to accuse of failure. Whether we're to remember that along with faith, there's hope. Hope has to do with God's promises that are still future and hidden. Just as faith has to do with God's promises that are here and now. To the person who has believed for today, but has not seen the answer come today, there comes the call to hope. Hope also says, tomorrow is God's. It's all a matter of faith. And with faith, we press on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to please stand. We join together in the offertory prayer. The summer sun shines, O oh Father, warming us in these bright months, feeding us all the year long. You have poured upon us your benevolence, O oh Father. Accept these signs of our appreciation. Teach us to be as generous as you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So in addition to those who are printed in the prayers in your worship, and please also say a special word of prayer this week for Lori Lasanti. Lori, it's good to see you here, but Lori is experiencing some, some cardiac-related issues and will be undergoing some testing, and, and uh, doctors are going to be working with her to try to determine what's, what's the best course of action. So Lori, we pray for you. Uh, this morning and in the, in the, in the days ahead, as, as I'm sure your heart is anxious now in these moments, uh, but, but uh, trust in faith that, that God's got you. For Mary Warner's friend, Barb, um, Barb is, is hospitalized with a, with a significant illness and we'll, we'll have to have some surgery, uh, so please say a special word of prayer for her friend, Barb. For Bonnie Capozzi's friend, Julie, who's been diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. For Ken Menard, cousin Lori, who has also been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. For Carol Coffin's friend Jean, uh, who is experiencing some complications from a prior surgery some 10 years ago. For Dave and Carolyn Coffin's sister Darlene, who's at home with pneumonia. For John Sweeney, and it's good to see John here in church, but uh, John and Nancy were on vacation last week and uh, there was the unexpected that came up which resulted John being hospitalized for a, a few days in, in pretty rough shape. Uh, I see had some GI issues, uh, but all is well now. Uh, so, John, we say a prayer of thanksgiving to God that, uh, that healing is, is yours, um, and uh, we pray that healing will continue to be yours uh, in the days ahead as well. And we thank Nancy. We thank God for Nancy and her presence and the strength that she was to you in your time of need as well. For John Phillips, uh, many of you may remember John Phillips. Uh, John often worshipped on, on Saturdays here. He was the owner of WJJL, uh, who we partnered with for, for a year or so. But anyway, John is in health. Uh, he's 
uh, he's currently in a, um, a facility uh, and will we'll be needing to undergo uh, some rehab. Uh, but Joanne called me and also informed me that they are uh, going to start John on hospice palliative care at this point as well. Uh, so please keep uh, John in your prayers as he's making this transition. Uh, also keep Joanne in your prayers. They don't have a lot of family here. I, I'm pretty sure it's pretty much just John and Joanne. So this is a, a tough time for, for her as well. Uh, so again, please keep her in your prayers. And last but not least, if you would, say a special word of prayer for the Kelm family. It did please our Lord last night to call home Don Kelm. Uh, Don was a longtime member of our congregation, uh, served here on the Board of Elders for, for a number of years. Um, uh, but Don has been in declining health for a number of months uh, and uh, has actually been over at Elderwood for, for a while. Um, but anyway, uh, God called him home last night, so uh, we rejoice in his new life, but we also hold up in our prayers, uh, particularly uh, Gail and, and Corey, uh, his wife and, and daughter, and the rest of the family. We pray. For true unity in the faith, for the preservation of pure doctrine, for harmony in the lives of our congregation, district, and synod, and for the charitable hearts that put the best construction on what we see in here, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those outside the kingdom, for missionaries near and far, for the ministries and agencies of our church, whereby the gospel is spoken to those who have not yet heard it, and for those who hear, that they may be brought to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For all pastors and church workers, for those preparing for full-time church work, and for those considering church work vocations, let us pray to the Lord. For all families, for husbands and wives to live in faithfulness to each other, for all mothers with child, for all children, and for those who bring them to baptism and nurture them in the faith, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, the Congress, our governor, all elected and appointed leaders, all judges and magistrates, the members of all the armed forces, our police, firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and their duties to protect and serve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the healing of the sick, the relief of the suffering, the comfort of the grieving, and the peace of the dying, we pray especially today for Lori, for Barb, for Julie, for Lori, for Jean, for Arlene, for John and John, we pray for the Kelm family and all of those who are printed in our worship bulletin, our friends, our family members, anybody else that we name before you in our hearts and for those who care for them in their afflictions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for all honest work and occupations, for our good use of the fruits of the labors, for generosity for those in need, and for the tithes and offerings that accompany our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for our remembrance of saints and in thanksgiving for their faithful witness, we especially today give you thanks and praise as we remember Don Kelm, that at last we may be joined with them in your eternal presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord God, giver of all that is good, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your grace that we may endure the changes and chances of this mortal life and be found worthy when our Savior comes to bring to completion all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood in the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Heavenly Father, with this bread and with this cup, we remember the life of our Lord offered for us. 
Believing in the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord's true body and blood with a living faith as he comes to us in his supper. Amen. Now we pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please have a seat. this your Lord's true body
Now may this, your Lord's true body and blood, strengthen you and keep you in the true faith from now until life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. And as we have that joy and as we have that peace in our hearts, as we have that confidence in, in our Christ's presence, as we grab hold of him with trust and hope, we go also with his blessing. My friends, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
morning again. Good to be with you, good to worship with you. I hope you've been blessed this morning in, in worship. It is good uh, to see all of you. Um, it's good to see uh, Noah. Noah's back in town. Uh, he's been out of town for a while now, but uh, Noah, it's good to see you. Uh, and De- uh, Deanne, uh, Deanne's been out as she's been recovering from, from her surgery. So Deanne, it's good to, good to have you back in church. We, we feel a little bit more complete now that you're here. So... Um, but anyway, uh, and of course to all of you, no favoritism at all, but uh, just, just good to be with all of you, but uh, certainly good to see some faces that we haven't seen in a while. Um, on the announcement end of things, I don't have a whole lot uh, to announce, but uh, uh, last, uh, or this, this last Tuesday, uh, John Sietzma made a new transition uh, to his new home. He's in an assisted living at uh, Elderwood. Um, so uh, I chatted a little bit with Helena, and he's doing okay. It's it's a tough tough transition, um, especially with all the COVID stuff. Uh, he he's, he has to be quarantined for for two weeks uh, with no contact. So the family's talking to him through the window or talking on the phone. So it's 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 tough there. So just keep John in your prayers and the family in your prayers in the time of transition. Um, if you want John's new address, uh, Helena posted it up on the bulletin board, so if you want to shoot him a card or whatever this week, uh, let him know that you're thinking about him. Um, uh, you can grab that address off of, the, uh, off of the bulletin board. It will probably be some time before John is, is with us again just because of all the, the, the COVID stuff. Uh, anytime John leaves the facility, it requires him to have a two-week quarantine period again. Uh, so it's, it's tough. It's tough for him to you know, uh, as much as he would want to be here and family wants to bring him here, it's a tough retransition every time. So, um, so hopefully we'll see John uh, soon. If this COVID stuff just kind of goes away, uh, we'll be able to see John, but, uh, but we're happy he's doing okay. And uh, please just shoot him some, some cards, let him know that you're thinking about him this week. All right. Um, anything, anything else that I'm, that I'm forgetting for the good of the group? All right, the only thing I'll mention to you is um, I'm, I'm off again this week. Uh, I'm using up some of my vacation. Uh, so um, I will be in town. I'll be local. Uh, I'm, so I'm planning on handling any emergencies or whatever that might arise. I pray that they don't. Um, but as far as services next week, um, uh, John Preston is going to be handling Saturday services for me. And Bob Chapman is going to handle Sunday services uh, so uh, thanks to those two guys who are, who are taking care of business. Uh, Rod's going to be away for the weekend. As, uh, you said Corinne's birthday is next weekend. So, uh, so Rod's going to be out of town, and, and these two guys, without hesitation, stepped right up to the plate and offered to take care of stuff for us. Uh, Melissa will also be back into the office this week, so, uh, so both the secretaries will, will, will be here for a limited time this week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So if you do need something and need to get in contact with someone in the office, you can call Wednesday or Thursday. Um, if something does come up where you need me, though, please call me on my cell phone. Um, that's going to be the best way. I'm not here, obviously, checking voice messages. So just call me on my cell phone, uh, and uh, I'll be sure to get back to you if I don't pick up right away, okay? Um, I'll keep you posted on the stuff for Don Kelm. Uh, I spoke very, very briefly yesterday uh, to, to Gail. Unfortunately, Don passed away during the 430 service, so I couldn't, I couldn't be with them, but um, I did see him Thursday. Um, but anyway, uh, in just briefly talking with, with Gail, uh, they are going to have a, a, a funeral service or a wake for Don at uh, Sheehan, uh, and then they do want a funeral service here at church. Uh, so I will, I'll keep you posted. I guess the best way I'm going to communicate that to you is I'll, I'll shoot it out to you in a text message or I'll put it up on the, on the website. Uh, I'm assuming they'll have an obituary too, but I, I just want to make sure that I communicate it to you in case uh, any of you are interested in, in uh, attending the funeral service for him. All right? We good? Okay. Have a blessed week, everyone. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.